a very good evening dear devotees our theme for today is mary mother of god this solemn procession of the statue of our lady of balangani in its 56th year will be held on sunday 3rd september at 5 pm those who wish to participate should assemble at the arch of the church lane on this day the veneration hall will be kept open from 5 am to 12 noon and after the procession we sincerely request our dear devotees to maintain a prayer prayerful atmosphere along the entire route all lay organizations and scc communities are requested to collect the banners for the procession after the 8 pm mass today from the donation stall tomorrow the donation stall will be kept open till 1 pm we welcome reverend father neil santos for this eucharistic celebration to the house of the In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, we welcome you to this Eucharist as we pray and meditate on various titles given to Our Lady in preparation for her birth. Today, in this parish, we remember Mary to be the Mother of God. Mary is always a mother and it's strange and interesting that the church also gave her the title to be the mother of God besides being the mother of Jesus let us pray to this mother all of us have our mothers either with us or in heaven let us pray to this mother our spiritual mother that she will bless us keep us safe protect us for the moments we have failed to acknowledge that we have been sinful for the times we have failed to respect our parents we have not given them the respect and dignity we have not loved and cared for them for the times we have not cared for those around us let us be truly sorry and ask the lord to pardon us i confess to, to almighty god, god. 
and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, to my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the prophet Jeremiah. O oh Lord, you have deceived me and I was received, deceived. You are stronger than I and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all the day. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I cry out, I shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me 
a reproach and derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart, as it were a burning fire, shut up in my bones, and I am weary and holding it in, and I cannot. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response to God's word will be sung, O God, my God, for you my soul is thirsting. Let us listen to the tune. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I appeal to you, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Kindly arise as we prepare our hearts for the gospel. Amen. Of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know what is the hope to which he has called us.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a hindrance to me. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of the Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers, it was in the 1920s, I think, when a young boy of about close to nine years old in Warsaw, in Poland, one day came after school. And uh, when he walked into his house, he found his father kneeling on a hard board. And he was crying. And the little boy asked his father why he was crying. And the father told this little boy, who was just about close to nine years, that his mother had passed away. And this little boy, not knowing what to do, he ran out of the house, ran down the street, about half a block away, and walked into a church. And he went and he knelt in front of the statue of Our Lady. And he told this beautiful image of Our Lady, that he had lost his mother, that his mother had died. And he told Our Lady that from that day, she would be his mother. He said, I don't have any mother now. I want you to be my mother. This little boy, my dear friends, close to nine years old, was no one but Carol Wojtyla, who went on to become Pope John Paul II. He is now a saint. And on that day, when he was not even nine years old, when he told Our Lady, you are my mother, they say that he literally consecrated himself and he used this title, totally yours. Totally yours. In Latin, it is called totus tuus. Totus tuus. Totally yours. And this is the title he used even as a bishop and as the Holy Father, totally yours, Mary, my mother. What is it that inspired, my dear friends, a young boy, not even nine years, not even being able to understand life, not even being able to understand what education was. There was communism in Poland. There was a lot of hardship. Father was on his knees crying. What is it that made him first, when he hears the death of his mother, he runs to the church, kneels in front of Our Lady, and consecrates himself, saying, I'm totally yours. What is it that makes or drives a little boy like him? And what is it that makes you and me come to this devotion to Our Lady? What is it that draws us? I think sometimes, my dear friends, if we have a nine-day novena for the birth of Jesus just before Christmas, 
I think and I doubt we may not have this type of crowd. For the birthday of Jesus, we don't have novena, right? But for Our Lady's Feast, nine days, there are crowds of people. I was asking Father, how many novena per day? What is the crowd? It just grows and grows and grows. What is it that draws us, my dear friends, to this devotion to Our Lady? Some people may think it's magical that if I come nine days, I place my devotion, my petition to Our Lady, I'll go on my knees, I'll roll on the floor, Our Lady will should grant me my petition. Is it not? I light a few candles, I'll buy a few of those wax, house, doll, various, you know, statuettes and offer, then Our Lady will grant me my petition. What is it, my dear friends, that draws uh, us to this image, this understanding of Mary as someone so very important in my life? The title, my dear friends, today's theme in the parish is that Mary is given the title of Mary, Mother of God. We can all say she is my mother. She is the mother of Jesus is in the human terms. And why is it that the church calls her mother of God? Can God have a mother? Very confusing to the mind, no? If God is God, is there a need for God to be born of a mother or God exists? Sometimes some people have a confusion in the mind that Mary cannot be the mother of God. She can be the mother of Jesus as a human being. One of the most earliest titles and most common titles in the early church was Mary, Mother of God. So already in the first council, one of the earliest councils, 431 in Ephesus, Ephesus was known to be possibly the place that Mary must have gone to her dormition, that means to sleep when she was assumed into heaven. Possibly Ephesus was a place not very far from Jerusalem, which Mary spent with John the Baptist. Because John was preaching in Ephesus, he dies in Ephesus, and possibly Mary was there where she passes away. So there was this one council in 431, which definitely said that among the many things that people were discussing, whether Jesus is God, Jesus is man, what is Mary's role in all of that, they say that Mary was the mother of God. And then later on, in 451, in another place called Chalcedon, not very far from there, they reiterated and said Mary is truly the mother of God. How does she become the mother of God? It's all there in the Bible. Not everything about our faith is there in the Bible. This one title is present in the Bible. And you find it twice. The first time, my dear friends, the angel goes to Mary at the time of the Annunciation. How old do you think Mary was at the time of the Annunciation? Very, very young. Jewish girls got married very young at the time when Mary was uh, bearing a child. Hardly about 17 or 18, not more than that. I think I may be even taking it further. She could have been younger. We don't know. So the Annunciation is at the moment when Mary is there, possibly in the temple or in the house, not very clear. And the angel comes and asks Mary a question. Will you be the mother of God's son? Will you be? the mother of God's son. It's a very open invitation, a very open title that you will bear a child of God. So bearing a child of God becomes mother of God. Very simple. No confusion. People create confusion. How can Mary become the mother of God? But there you have it, the Annunciation. Mary does not give an answer immediately. She struggles within herself. It's not an easy answer we sort of camouflage that Mary said yes, she was very nice. No, she was not uh, so very easy to give an answer. So Mary takes time, Mary prays, it says, Mary pondered in her heart. She had to spend time in prayer and then when she's able to understand and grapple a young woman, how to answer such an, you know, challenging question. Today so many challenges face us, which subjects to take, which career to choose, how to choose a spouse, where to go and live, such difficult questions. We take so many years. And there you have Mary being asked a very, very important question that changed the destiny of humanity. Will you be the mother of God's son? Did Mary have a choice to say yes or no? What do you all think? Mary had a choice. 
Mary had a choice. And therefore, in the scriptures, you will see, my dear friends, that Mary is also compared to another woman, a woman who would have been the mother of humanity, Eve. Eve had a choice. It was not that the serpent or the devil, whoever came to her and tempted her, she was not forced. She also had a choice. She chooses to walk on the path of evil, to disobey God. The eating of that fruit simply meant disobedience to God. It's not which fruit she had, what it tasted, that is not important. God had asked Adam and Eve, I'll give you everything on this earth, everything. Can you imagine? You and I don't have everything on earth. 500 square feet of house, one washing machine, one television, 10 mobiles in the house. Adam and Eve were given the whole of the land and said, everything belongs to you. Can you imagine? If you were told everything in this world is yours, but don't eat this fruit. That was the only thing that God invited her. Don't do it. But they disobeyed. We are all listening, no, yeah, Eve made that mistake. She was disobedient. Ask yourself how many disobedience are there in your life. How many times you'll multiply yourself it's not an accusation against anyone. How many times the church has taught, Jesus has taught us, how many times have we disobeyed? Those many times we multiply goes into being who Eve is, Eve was, and we have become. All of us have a choice. Do we choose to disobey? Or would you want to look at another woman, Mary? She had a choice to say no to God and say, I'm sorry, I'm too young. I cannot be responsible for such an important thing. Please find somebody else. She had a choice. But Mary is prepared by God from her birth. That's what we will be celebrating on the 8th. We're celebrating her birth because her parents helped her. Her parents helped her from her childhood to be safe, to be pure, to be chaste. And every parent has this responsibility. Don't say that my children are not listening, they're doing whatever they want. Even till they are old, married, have children, you still have a responsibility to pray for your child, guide your child. That's what the parents of Mary did, kept her safe, made her make the right choice. And in Mary making that choice, yes, I accept what you are asking, what God is asking of me. She takes the responsibility of becoming the mother of God. And then she makes another journey to Ain Karim. Ain Karim is a place where Elizabeth lived. She herself was pregnant. Mary goes to help to Ain Karim, where Elizabeth is. And there, the first word of greeting that Elizabeth gives to Mary is once again reiterating that she is the mother of God. She says, what privilege is this that the mother of God would come to me? Once again, that title is used, that the mother of God is come to me. She does not say, you are my cousin, that you are come. Why you are come? Why did you take the trouble? But she says, why does the mother of God come to me? That mother of God is come to you. Is she there with you in your prayer, in your intercession? And will you ask like Elizabeth, why is this mother of God present in my life? Why do I go to her to pray? What is it that I want? What I expect from this relationship with her? So in the scriptures, my dear friends, there are many other texts which allude and say that Mary is truly the mother of God. She is the mother of God. People had difficulties, they gave her the title later, but there was no need of it. It's already there in the Bible that Mary was and is the mother of God. And in she being the mother of God, there are people like John, St. John Paul now, many other saints, many, many saints, many of you and me as individuals look at Mary as our mother. But she's also the mother of God and we have to have that perception that Mary also as a mother of God, she took care of her son with great integrity, with great loyalty, with great patience. When we look at the life of Jesus, we see the person that he was, the character that was built in him. We say that that is the result of a good mother. Mary nurtured, pondered with that child, prayed with him, gave him a proper direction to life. And that is what is required of us. If we want Mary to be a mother, mother of God, she has to also teach us these values. She has given us these values of faith. Mary was a woman of great faith. Being the mother of God, she could have said, no need. 
shift this thing from here to there, give me the food that I want, I don't need to work hard. Everything was possible. She's a mother of God. But yet Mary is there, journeying with Jesus, standing with Jesus at the cross, being with the apostles in the, the room on top, closed, frightened. Mary is there in prayer, woman of great faith. She never gave up. At the foot of the cross, she could have asked God, release him from the cross, bring him down, let him save more people. She says none of that. She has great faith. She teaches us that in moments of difficulty, tribulation, problems, sicknesses and all, don't lose your faith. Don't question why is there a problem in my life because Mary being the mother of God still had this great element of faith in her. Mary besides having a, a life of faith, she was a woman of prayer. Though we don't see in the scriptures very clearly, but without a life of prayer, you cannot have the gift of faith in you. That faith has to be nurtured by a life of prayer. And while the apostles were hiding in the upper room, not knowing what to do, Mary was the only one possibly praying with over there. And she was asking God her father, she was asking the gift of the spirit to help that they may become strong, courageous to go and preach. Mary is that great woman of faith and a woman of prayer. And ask yourselves, how strong is your life of prayer? Are we only people who use this devotion of nine days to become prayerful? Or am I consistent in my life of prayer every day? Mary teaches us, along with faith, prayer life is also important. And thirdly, my dear friends, being the mother of God, as I said, she did not have to make much effort. But Mary, right from the time she conceives her child in the womb, Jesus, she has only seen a life of struggle. And I don't think there was any other woman who struggled as much as her. Being the mother of God means big life, all comfort. But she does not see any of that. She has to bear a child alone in a dirty place. She has to become a migrant. Right? Today we don't like the word migrant, but she becomes a migrant, has to escape into Egypt to protect her child. She lives in another country, not knowing the language, not knowing its food habits, not knowing what certainty is there, struggles over there, no complaint, comes back into her own land, Nazareth. Once again, new place, resettling. It was never easy for her. Husband dies, becomes a widow, son walks away out of the house, no complaining, no grumbling. Woman of great faith, woman of prayer, and thirdly, a woman of action. As mother of God, she was always looking forward how to do good things for people. And she continues doing that by her many apparitions in our world today. Mary never stopped appearing to people. She'll continue appearing to people to assure them that we all need a life of penance and a life of prayer. Let's pray, my dear friends as we come to honor Mary through this devotion, that as she is the mother of God, she never took it easy, she never had an easy life, and yet she never complained, no grumbling, only keep the faith strong, keep your life of prayer strong. Let's spend a moment in silence, thanking God for giving Mary, our mother, to us, that she may constantly be a source of inspiration to us. When things don't go the way we want, Things are not very comfortable. And that life does not afford us comfort, good health. That the life of Mary comes before us. And may we like John Paul, Saint John Paul, who consecrated himself at such a young age, saying to her, totus tuus, totally yours. Can we say to Mary, we are completely yours, mother. Intercede for us your son Jesus. <coughs> Kindly stand. We profess our faith in God and in the church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ only Son, our Lord, Lord, who was conceived, conceived by, by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born, born of the Virgin, Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius, Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried.
the body, life everlasting. Amen. We pray to God our Father who allowed his son to suffer so that we may find meaning in our own sufferings and through the intercession of Mary our mother all of us may have hope our response will be Lord hear our prayer together Lord. of Jesus they may accept willingly all the sufferings that come their way we pray to the Lord Lord, Lord hear our prayer. unjustly, that they may find the grace to accept their sufferings after the example of Jesus, who only did good to all, but was crucified and died a shameful death. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For Christians severely persecuted in our country, that in their trials and tribulations, they may find the strength to follow Christ unreservedly and bear witness of faith to their tormentors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our All devout faithful who are celebrating the Navina in honor of our blessed mother, that they may have the courage to follow her example in facing their own sorrows as Mary did. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And all women in our society, that they may be shown the respect and dignity that is theirs as children of God and be spared totally from any form of abuse. We pray to the Lord. Personal needs and intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear. Ask the wisdom, God, our loving Father, to know your will and the strength to bear joyfully our sufferings. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my dear friends, that this our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by suffering cancelled out our sins, by his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, 
We sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with Oswald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We prepare now to receive Jesus into our hearts. Just as Mary bore Jesus in her womb, we too have become carriers of Jesus in our lives by receiving him. Let us pray for ourselves, all our petitions, and also remember to pray for those who have no one to pray for. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace and the joy of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We joyfully share some sign of God's love and peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the Behold, Jesus, the Lamb of God, born to Mary, our mother, who entered our world to take away our sins. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. But in the sake of the world, my soul shall be healed. We are happy to know that our brothers and sisters from other faith are present here.
speak in tongues, be a prophet, understand every mystery. Let us pray. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, O Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Shall now have the novena prayer to Our Lady of Velankini. O most, most holy, holy Virgin, Virgin, you were chosen, chosen to be the mother of Jesus. Jesus. Permit me, O devoted client, to praise you for this unique privilege. O tender mother and comfortress of the afflicted, grant me the special protection which you have promised to those who venerate you. Relying on the infinite mercies of your divine Son, trusting on his promises that those who ask would receive, and penetrated with confidence in your powerful intercession, I most humbly entreat you to obtain for me the favor which I petition for in this novena. If it is the holy will of God, or else whatever graces I most stand in need of. 
Let us pray for all our spiritual and temporal favors, for the good health and comfort, for the sick and the suffering in our hospitals, in our homes, for better relationship in our families, better spousal relationship of husband and wife, for an increased loving relationship between parents and children, for happy settlement of those who intend to get married, and for those discerning to the priesthood and religious life. Let's also pray for accommodation for those seeking to find a home, relief and poor to the marginalized, for those wanting the gift of children in their marriage and for safe confinement. Let us remember to pray for all our children who are studying, for those seeking employment, for those wanting better career options, let us also remember to pray for those who are caught up in addiction, for drugs, alcoholism, pornography, and others. And all your private petitions placed before the Lord to the intercession of Mary, our mother. In veneration of, of love, love and, joy, and joy with, with which, which your, your heart was replenished, when, when the, the word was made flesh in your womb, I, I offer you the sentiments of my heart. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary Mother, Mother of God, God pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary Mother, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O Mother of God, accept these salutations in union with the veneration with which the angel Gabriel first aid you, full of grace. I, I wish most sincerely that these may become so many gems in the crown of your, your celestial glory. glory. Mother, Mother Mary, to your keeping, soul, soul and body be confined, toiling, resting, walking, walking sleeping, be ever at, at our side. side. Cares, Cares that vex us, joys that please us, life and death we trust in you. You make yours all for Jesus and for all eternity. Amen. Kindly sit for announcements. My dear friends in Christ, this Eucharist was celebrated by Reverend, F Reverend Father Neil Dos Santos, who is the Chancellor in Archbishop of Skolaba. He has also helped me in solving many issues related to mixed marriage cases. On behalf of our parish clergy team and on behalf of all you devotees, we extend our sincere thanks to Reverend Father Neil for celebrating this Eucharist for all of us. 
as well as preaching about Mary, Mother of God, with a lot of spiritual insights. God bless you, Father, and your ministry. Announcements. Priests are available for the Sacrament of Confession in the Veneration Hall. Feasts this week. Tuesday, 5th September, St. Mother Teresa of Kolkata. Thursday, 7th September, Blessed Frederick Ozanam. Friday, 8th September, the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We have begun the Novena in preparation for the Feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Tomorrow, Sunday, 3rd September, we have the solemn procession of the statue of Our Lady of Wellingtony, which will commence at 5 p.m. and conclude with Mass in the church. Friday, 8th September, is the Feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The Feast Mass will be at 7.15 p.m. The main celebrant at the Mass will be Bishop Bartol Pareto. End of announcements. Stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The celebration of the Eucharist is ended. Let us go forth to give glory to God by our lives. Thanks be to God.